Michael Wargo, team pilot for Precision Aerobatics, and today we are going to do part two of my video on how to make the plane fly the way you want it to. Um, so many guys are flying EDFs, and I often ignore that because I'm a 3D pilot, but uh, we're going to do uh, EDFs today. Um, this is a 70 millimeter Viper. It's, you know, the smaller they get, the twitchier they get, the more um, they tend to not quite fly as smoothly as the bigger ones. And I think it's important to learn how to set it up so you can fly it like that. So today I chose a 70 millimeter version. This is one of my planes. It's an FMS uh, a Viper, and this thing flies beautifully. I have um, uh, I have a few flights on it. I have uh, what I think is uh, trimmed it out perfectly. I think it's flying really good. I'll probably need a few more flights on it to make it fly exactly like I want it to. But my big concern with flying an EDF is because I like to try and fly it like my big turbines. I like to make long, smooth passes, like long, slow rolls, and I like to do nice, long knife edge passes and inverted passes. So um, in order to make a small plane look big, you got to slow down the rates a little bit. You have to just, um, and again, it depends on the way you want to fly it. If, if you're a guy who just wants to go wow, wow, and just crank it and bank it, uh, set it up so it feels good that way. But the thing is, as you're flying it, and you see the way it flies, don't accept how it flies the first time you fly it. What we have to do is uh, take some time to say exactly how fast do I want these ailerons to roll at center stick. Um, when we're at really high speeds with them, where do we want it? Do we need to change another rate to make sure when we're going fast? A big thing with EDFs and with turbine jets is those long, low uh, passes look amazing, okay, when you can keep the plane just above the deck. In order to do that, you have to put a down elevator mix because when you hit throttle, the plane goes up. That's the way it works. Um, um, I make a, uh, a, a mix that, you know, is variable with, with the amount of throttle so that when I'm just going slow, I'll show you two you know, passes that are different, but they'll both stay pretty low. Um, I haven't dialed it in yet, so we'll, we'll see. Um, I, for me, I, I'm usually concerned with high speed and low speed to make sure I have good control. I can fly the entire uh, thing on high rates because I set my high rates very soft in the middle. But I normally, as soon as I get off the ground, so I use high rates for takeoff and landing and very little else. Uh, I switch to that mid rate and that's pretty much all I use. And I make sure I have enough rudder on that mid rate to do a nice knife edge. Okay. I'm very soon going to do a video on how to fly EDFs to make them look like larger planes. How to make them look good when you're, when you're flying it. Um, but for right now, um, it's really kind of windy and getting worse every minute. So um, I'm going to see if we can get through this uh, section here. Yeah, you can see how, uh, how windy it is. The first thing I do to make it fly like I want is I watch it, I'm still on high rates, and I make sure as it's rolling, I can roll smoothly. Um, it's really important that the ailerons aren't too fast. I'm flying fairly fast. This is a speedy little aircraft. But those ailerons are pretty, uh, they're pretty smooth. Now, I like to do a lot, and now I'm going to switch to that other rate, and I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll test uh, the aileron rate. Now, I've already done this. So on this mid rate, it's still I can fly a much slower roll, you see. Uh, I slowed them down a little bit to make sure it looks really precise. And also, I always like to do point rolls with these planes. So I make sure my rudder isn't too radical to make sure the point rolls, the nose stays just where it belongs. Find it again. To be honest with you, this plane really, really flies good. I mean, it really flies like a much bigger jet. Uh, plus, it's really fast. But now we're going to try that nice low pass with, with barely any throttle, okay? So I'm going to try and just keep it a little off the ground, fly it low. It's staying nice and stable. I mean, I'm surprised the wind didn't just throw it into the ground. It's, it's really windy here. So now, as you can see, when I get into that low configuration and I hit high throttle, 
I'm going to have a little more trouble with it because it's going to want to balloon up and I did not set this properly yet. I'm pretty close. But you see it's starting to rise. So I can't do that low slow or, or that low end-to-end uh, -end runway thing until I mix in some down elevator because the last thing you want to do when you're flying low is push down on the elevator towards the ground. It's not only unnerving, it's, uh, it's just stupid. Um, but that nice fast pass like this, it looks absolutely awesome. But I'm, I'm flying it through that. I didn't mix it out properly. You know, you might want to have a rate set so that you can really spin the hell out of it. Uh, that's on my normal rate, that it's, it's just not spinning quite as fast as it can. So if you want to do those, you know, spin like a bullet, we go with a bit higher rate. That's fine for a foamy, but not for a big one, in my opinion. No, no, you're right. It's a little too fast. The other thing I like to pay a lot of attention to is watching its uh, performance inverted. Um, you know, CG is super, super important, okay? You fly it the way you want to. The more towards, with, with jets, the CG becomes important more so when you're taking off and landing. Because if the CG is a little further back, and I know a lot of people like to fly their jets nose heavy, if it's a little further back, the plane will rotate better. It will take off easier. And there's absolutely no doubt about that. Well, we went through that with the Boomerang Ranger a bunch of times. Exactly. To move it back. And flying slow like this, you see how the nose stays nice and high? If you're a little too nose heavy, when I'm flying very slow like that, it, uh, it numbs the surfaces too. You have, it makes it very mushy. And then if the nose is pointing down, you're really gonna, it'll hit a very scary place pretty quick to where you know, um, you'll have to add a lot of elevator to get the nose up. The other big benefit to a slightly aft CG or a neutral CG is landing. If you want it to slow down more, you have to have the CG back. Um, if you would like to have that nice nose high attitude that hopefully we're going to have when I land this plane, you have to have the, the CG as not very nose heavy because that will negate that. And if it's nose heavy, it's way, way more likely to bounce on you. I mean, way more likely to bounce. Um, not so, really bounce, but porpoise. Then you get oscillation back and forth. Exactly, exactly. Sorry, you're right. Okay, you know, the other thing for me that's important, because it's important for my flying, is that nice inverted pass. And since my CG is really good, um, I try it the first time on high rates to make sure I can make an inverted pass on high rates. So I reverse the airplane, come down, and it's taking a lot more elevator. So I have it nice and pegged here. And to make sure that stays right on line with where I want it and the tail isn't too sensitive, and I have it there. Um, it takes a, a bit more elevator than I really expected, and coincidentally, it hit the mark with this uh, on my first try. Um, I do not need to have an elevator mix to keep it down because it is wanting to stay down. I'm having to feed, uh, uh, I'm having to feed the elevator. Okay, another example of something that I do to fly the way I want it to. I like to fly knife edge. I like to fly those low knife edges with my big jets and with these little EDFs. Uh, it's no different. The thing is, you've got to mix it out. Um, so there's a few things to concern myself with. The first, of course, is that rudder elevator mix and the rudder aileron mix. That helps to make those point rolls very straight. I've already done the mixing for the most part. I think I might be able to tweak it to make it a little better. But one thing I realized very quickly is that thing, this thing had so much rudder authority that as I was trying to fly knife edge, um, the, it just had too much rudder so it would start to climb. I'd roll on knife edge, then before you know it, I'm going higher and higher and higher. 
Okay? So what I did was I made certain that I had enough rudder on my mid-rate, my high-speed rate, to be able to come down on knife edge and make it look really smooth and be able to keep, uh, and to be able to maintain the altitude. So if I want to start it down here, I want to make sure that it stays down there. Unfortunately, I had to roll out. I wasn't going fast enough at the beginning. So let me uh, uh, start it over and see if I can get exactly the right attitude and for it to hold the right altitude. So as I'm coming down, I want to watch my rudder. It is really, really windy and, and it's uh, moving around quite a lot because of the wind bit of a headwind and crosswind. Okay, if you're the guy that really loves those ultra slow maneuvers, you like to fly it dirty, Landing flaps, steer down. okay, you need to make sure your high rates are adequate to keep complete control. See, we're going to fly it slow, we're going to slow it down. Whoops. Uh, so as I'm flying slower, I still have plenty of elevator, plenty of everything to keep this plane flying straight. Obviously you have to mix out uh, you know, your landing flaps to make sure the plane stays straight and things like that. So I'm going to land now because I'm running out of battery. Um, but as always, you, you watch because my CG is just right, I'm going to be able to keep the nose of this aircraft up. And if you look at this right here, you can see how really nice and high the nose is able to be kept. That's because Everything was set up just right. The moral of this story is, you know, we need ahead of time to predetermine what you want this to look like while you're flying. Do you really want it, everything to look very smooth like a bigger aircraft? Well, you got to lower the rates a little bit or increase your expo. I'm always a proponent of adding expo because if you ever need the extra, because there are cases where you set a really low rate and then you slow down and you're pointed towards the ground and when it comes time, to add some uh, elevator, it's not there, just because of the configuration of the airplane. And it could be really scary, you know, coming over into loop or something like that. When I'm setting up a low rate, I always make certain that I can do a fairly substantial pull up. You know, and that means I can pull out just as easily. Um, you know, and finally, don't underestimate how important it is to have that mix that keeps you low to the ground and feel the plane low to the ground, like that low inverted pass. I have a photograph of a similar aircraft, a tornado, a Viper, you know, doing a limbo under a two foot high bar, you know, and um, uh, that particular photograph uh, was only possible because once I leveled the aircraft out, my aircraft was set up to the point where I could just leave it there you know, these tiny movements weren't going to take it up and down. I was able to just stay steady and low. And if you have that in your arsenal and you want to fly those really cool maneuvers and keep that plane really low, you have to set the plane up so it will do it. So uh, anyway, those are my opinions on the subject. So uh, uh, good luck.